the nightlife in Atlanta is 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 just being ruined. Closing early hurt it for sure. Uh, a lot of sections, not a dance floor hurt. Mm. I feel like that dance having a dance floor helped, but then you know you can't get a bang for your buck. I I, I see mm. both sides. You know the the consumer wants to dance. But the the owner and the promoter makes money off of a section. Atlanta is the only city that I've seen to where promoters have a full time job being a promoter. When I go to other cities, that's their part time. That's their part time job. job. Facts. Yeah. And now you have a smaller amount of people. And then that also changed the way that DJs got paid. Because if it's only three hundred people in here, why would I pay you a thousand dollars when my overhead is less than that? Mm. So I'm all, I'm thinking of the economics. I'm thinking about all these things. They're making all their money off bottle service. So if if I can sell a section for fifteen hundred, I'm gonna put ten of them in there. Buckhead is 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 doing away with a lot of the clubs. Look at Buckhead Saloon. You know the the first Buck Buckhead Saloon. You know they made everybody okay. Everybody on Sunday got to close at twelve now. That, that kind of messed up the party. They knew that was gonna happen. That, that but that. Atlanta was known for partying on Sundays. Everybody knows. Yeah, because all the celebrities will be in town on Sunday. So that's how you can get the bang for your buck. Another thing too is that. The uh, the economy isn't where where it used to be. People have that to too. understand. It's like you go to a club, right? Think about how much it costs before you even walk into the club. Va- outfit. Well, you go, valet, out, well, yeah. the outfit before Start you get to the home. club. Look, yeah. Yeah. hey, yeah, you put the park. you gonna spend more money on parking than you put in your gas tank for the and week. Some people won't. <laughs> then you'll park your car in an area that it may get broken into. Wow. And, and then think about money. how much it costs when you get into the club. Then you go. You have to pay. <laughs> Don't let nobody uh, left their ID. Now you got to pay a hundred dollars to get in. <laughs> this is just Atlanta. Uh, word with me, here you know BT. No how it go, shout out OCT. No real cap, call out what we see. Whole game ready, ball of bricks on three. No, you can't stand on their own two feet. I already know you can't ball with me. Cause I brought up with the squad of me. They get a letter, they call me. Ball alert. Ball alert. Ball alert. Baller Alert, welcome to the Baller Alert Show. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. I go by the name, you know BT. OCT is back. Welcome back. Did you miss me? Hey. So you see how, you see how, um, uh, I'll, LCT, you're not a Leo. I'm thinking you a Leo. I'm the over cancer here. Cancer in the building. Yeah, cancer I'm like, I'm like, well, happy belated. Though. Yeah, happy, happy belated to you as well. You know, uh, Leos and Cancer, we be partying to uh, December the 31st. That's, We're why, the that's terrible. Yeah. I don't understand y'all. What? Y'all be trying to own the whole. Y'all, Zodiac, both of y'all Zodiac signs annoy me. Okay, y'all two don't annoy me, but y'all Zodiac signs, y'all like Dallas Cowboy people. It's all about y'all Zodiac signs. It is. But you know what? Because you got daughters who are cancers. Here you go. Had to throw in something. Yep. You know what? Let's talk about these gifts that you gave us, <laughs> OCT. Well, Welcome I didn't back. give us these gifts. Actually, these came from Drika. So, uh, Drika has fulfilled her promise, and she has give, given us some of her products. Uh, I'm not sure what's in the bags uh, and boxes, and uh, I don't know which is which. So, we can open them now if you guys want. All right, cool, all cool. Right. Let, let, oh, let do it. I don't know whose is who. All I know is it smell good. I don't know if we. I have uh, I had a specialty order because I have eczema. Okay, okay. Oh. Smells good. All right, let's see which yeah, one. Yeah, it does smell good. Let's I'm telling you, this stuff is right. smelling good. I'm telling you, it's a lot of stuff. Damn. And then um, when you this open it, this is a lot of stuff. When you open it, uh, it has a wellness ritual. As you unwrap this package. Know that it's more than just a gift. <laughs> it's a token of self care and mm. well being. They she got candles in There's here. There's candles in here. Y'all love candles. I Y'all, love this is candles nice. Too. Yeah, this is why this is why people be pop, uh, going crazy about drink. We have some body butter, the drink of body butter. Release the day cleanser. Okay, okay. See this, see this this is the moisturized repair. You know. <laughs> Drinker, we need to know which one of these that had your skin glowing when you was up here. Wow. That's what's up. This is nice. Oh, is this my candle? That body scrub. Oh, Lord. Damn, this is good. Let me smell it. Pause. (laughs) (laughs) Yo. Yo, my guy. This does smell good. Hey, bro, give it back, bro. This is mine. (laughs) Man, put all the stuff down, man. Let's let's do all this when we get done. All right, come on. Let's go. Uh, Let me just read this real quick. Okay. she uh, left us a note in each of our boxes, and it says, um, as you unwrap this package, enclosed are some plant-based wellness tools carefully selected to enhance your self-care routine. May they serve as gentle reminders to prioritize your mental, emotional, and physical health. Here's to nurturing your well-being from the inside. 
Drika Gates. Thank you so much for supplying the Ball Alert Show and BT because he was using lotion instead of oil. And now he's right. <laughs> yeah, they was. No, Drika, they, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I already text my wife mid episode and tell her Drika sent us some vibes and I put us so I could use it too. Yeah, now I can stop using lotion uh, for my face. Yeah. Thank that. you, Drika. Cleanse, exfoliate, mask, Ooh, this facial mist. We we'll appreciate you until the next time you get on the show. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll Hopefully, we'll be looking like your skin was. We'll be glowing. It was, it was glowing, baby. For sure. Yes, but we, let's get into the show. It's a lot going on, guys. All right, just in case you missed it. All right, guys, what do you feel about uh, presidential candidates on streaming platforms with the Twitchers, the streamers? It's important. Generation Z, man. You got to go where they're at. I think it's genius. I think it's a, it's a great, innovative idea to get young uh, adults to vote for you because yep. streaming is a new platform, yep. but it's also a platform that has a lot of young people. What are presidents trying to get you to do? They're trying to get the black vote and they're trying to get young people to vote. Right. And I also think, you know, yeah, I remember, shout out to Charlemagne. Someone turns 18 every day. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're potential new voters, and you got to go meet them where they're at. And I believe Trump is very smart, or the person around Trump is very smart. He's doing what he did to be Hillary. He's doing, he's thinking outside the box. I've never seen a presidential candidate even acknowledge a streamer before. So this in itself to me is just, well, I was like, wow, okay. Kamala, what you going to do? But what do you also think about the backlash that people are are giving her for, like, don't bring it to social media. That's stupid. Da, da, da. Social media here, man, ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I was it's just, just going to say that now. those are just older people that they're not thinking about the youth. The youth controls the world. And that's what people don't understand. It's like if you are running for office, you want to be you want to be in there to have a second term. You don't just want to get in office and become the president and then get beat your next term. So you need these young people who, like Rari said, is going to turn 18. You need to get these youth. You need to get pe people are on the Internet. I will. I will throw this out there and I will say this. Um, I'm not really, really big in politics my, myself, but when it's time to vote, I do educate myself on who these people are. And I find the person who I can identify with and I vote for that person. So I. I mm -hmm. employ implore people to do the same, um, especially the young folks who you may get turned off because it's a lot of terms and things that are being said that you'd be like, what are they talking about? What's bipartisan? What's this? And like, you got to look these things up and you got to do the research. So take some time on the weekend or in your off time and look up these candidates, look up their uh, what they're known for, what they support, who they mm -hmm. are. And Generation Z, one thing about Generation Z and I, I ended there, they're going to find out. They gon' they gonna dig deep. So who we just uh not we but who Kamala just added um Tim Walls? Is yeah, it Tim? Yep, is it Tim? Yep, yep. Yep. Tim Walls. We gonna find out if he is as clean as it shows that he is. Well, so far well, he is. Well, one thing. And I'm, if, if y'all get elected, come on, get this uh come on, get this weed uh, legalized in Georgia. Well, damn one, it, man. I'm I'm glad you said that because I'm gonna segue to this. Also, keep in mind that it's important to vote for your mayor to vote for the governor because those are the people that have the most local elections matter for yeah. sure yeah. boy most. that might be that might be even that that will that will affect you more yeah than you even know yeah. for sure they matter most you yep. know and affect you more facts um cardi b and offset damn the divorce damn you think That's it's you. happening wait 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 the pregnancy the pregnancy that's boy. your boy. My boy done dropped the package off and then they, they got up out of there. Man. Look, I just hope... I, I, I love Offset. That's my brother. That's my guy. Uh, I've only met Cardi once. Yeah, once. Um, but I've known Offset since... For a very long time. Uh, I just hope... <laughs> I just hope they have a good co-parenting situation and maybe they can work their marriage out. Doesn't look like they will, but let's just hope for good co-parenting. Um, they have three beautiful kids, well, two, but about to be three beautiful kids together. And let's just hope for good co-parenting because that, that shit could get nasty, man. We don't want no nasty co-parenting. Yeah, That's all I, I, I mean, I, I, hope, I hope they can figure it out too. I think the first time um, we could see that there was actually effort into making a relationship work, 
the marriage work, but I, I feel like this time, it looks like it's kind of done. It looks like it's done this time. Last time, I kept saying, get your wife back. Because you saying, remember Offset was going on stage and bringing roses. That was the first, and, I think that was the first, first, first time. I can't remember how many but times that's the been. public. That's the that's the public I first said, time that, that we, you know, we knew they had a... But then the last time, you know, she had publicly said, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a smash my husband if I need some because I'm getting horny. So she kept saying that I think that they had a little rendezvous, but I think now it's past... It looks like it's bad. Yeah, it looks bad. So I just want them to. Hopefully, it could be it can end amicably, and they can have uh, a good, positive co-parenting ship. Well, what did not end amicably was the closing of Red Martini. Yeah, R.P. Red Martini, or maybe in Atlanta, it's gonna, Georgia. Yeah, one time for Atlanta, Georgia, the biggest party I believe in Georgia had became this R&B party. Um, BT party, right? BT's yeah. party that he does with Brian Michael Cox. And, and Keith I'm, Thomas. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you in. But I want to say it started at SL Lounge. Yep. Then it went to Medusa. Yep. Then it went to Red Martini. Nope. Where it went after that? After Medusa, we went to uh, Opera, which they changed the name. Now. I didn't like that. Yeah, I, didn't like, I didn't like it. I opera. didn't like that either. That was weird. And then we went to... <laughs> Red Martini. No, no. Then Damn. we went to we went to Republic. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. But yeah. it's a, it's a, it's unfortunate because I, I I just feel like um, you know, just with all the success we've been having, you know, being able to get R and B a, a you know a, a party and a platform of people who love R and B and listen to R and B, you just can't go to the club and, and hear the trap. I know it's a lot of fake R and B parties too because people say oh. they're doing an R and B party and you will go to the you will go to the club and, and they, they play R and B for up. one hour and they play hip hop music for three straight hours. You like right, yo, right, right. what's going on? But I think that it's an unfortunate situation because from what I was told is that there's some underlying beef with the owner of the club and the landlord and the landlord does not um, like nightclubs, doesn't like lounges. Mm. So the landlord is pressing hard. Yeah, because it's it's a it's red martini. And it's something. Isn't it called hole in the wall? Right yeah, next yeah, to it's, it? yep, it's hole in the Buckhead wall. Next bars to it. is right there. Right? Yep, yeah. yep. So yeah. I think I just think just that area because you got to understand Atlanta. Go to whiskey mistress. Yeah, the, until they kick them out too. <laughs> you like you just never know. Because uh, for for the audience, it's red martini is located where in Lo- Buckhead. Buckhead. Yeah, yeah, lo- yeah. And that is like close a to Lennox, very close to Lennox Mall. Yeah. And they're cracking down uh, very on heavy on clubs, just crime, clubs, and all. All of that because yeah. recently I was uh, I heard on the news that um, 30% crime is down ever since well, Lennox Mall, uh, you know, started to reinforce, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with officers and all that in yes. the mall. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're trying to maybe clean up the area. I mean, I think uh, shout out to, uh, to Atlanta PD, too, because I haven't been to Lennox Mall in probably about five years. And I went for the first time. And it was, uh, you didn't enjoy you enjoyed it, right? I, yeah, yeah was, I actually was, enjoyed yeah, myself. Yeah. I actually went shopping. It was actually you know a great Safe time. time. I, yeah, yeah. It was. I only go during the day during the week. I never go on the weekend because it's like just you can't even park. But it was it was it was smooth. They had everything. You could you could tell they cha- they changed. Yeah. Like they got they got the Apple Store in front of them all. Like with you know with security, police officers. I'm like you still iPhone out here. You getting popped? Mm. <laughs> you know what and I'm they saying? They got a. Uh, 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 what do you call that? Detectors. Uh, yeah, metal detectors. Yep, they got metal. They got metal yeah, detectors. They, the they, they not yeah. playing around. But I just think this this attack um, on nightlife in Atlanta needs to stop. Um, so I, it's an attack on nightlife. I, I believe that it's an attack on nightlife, but I also understand that clubs being out at a certain time is not very safe because there are a lot of people that are prone to, you know, crimes and, and, and things of that nature, leaving a club, people, you know, t- but one thing I will say about our party, our R&B party is we never had an incident. Okay. We never had a fight. We never had anything. Now, we're only at that club for one day a week. Mm-hmm. That club is open six days a week. Okay. So we don't know what issues they could have with the city or with the landlord that's causing a landlord to push them out. Only thing I know is we look on social media and they got bottles and sections and everything they outside. Furniture, bottles, like hookahs, everything was on the side. Yeah, so everything. they emptied the entire club out. But to uh, to say this, like if you realize Buckhead is 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 doing away with a lot of the clubs. Look at Buckhead Saloon. You know the the first Buck Buckhead Saloon. You know they made everybody okay. Everybody on Sunday got to close at twelve now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
You know that, that kind of messed up the party. They knew that was gonna happen. That, that but that. Atlanta was known for partying on Sundays. Everybody knows. Yeah, because all the celebrities will be in town on Sunday, so that's how you can get the bang for your buck. Right. So sure. if if you can't open up on Sundays, and then you tell the people, well, people need to come to your club at eight, seven or eight o'clock. Man, nobody's coming to the club. You at had seven. a party. You had me DJing at what was it, Misfit. Yeah, I had Misfits. Man. And Misfits was one of the, Still mad one, about that the one. most fun party that you they ever shut been that to. One down too. We played hip hop, we played uh Spanish music, shut we played uh EDM music and What was it? It, around the corner from Buckhead it, it, it was Saloon. around the corner for Buckhead oh. Saloon. It was in Buckhead, yeah. Yo, so when I left Buckhead By Saloon. Buckhead Theater. I had I, I started Misfits and I told Ferrari, like, yo, bro, this is a fun party. And it was the, it was a diverse party. To this day, that was my favorite party. That was my work. favorite party wow. too. So I I think the nightlife in Atlanta is 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 just being ruined, man. And it's like it's, it's just sad to see like your why? favorites. Where are, why why do you think? Um I just feel like it's changed now. Um I don't. I don't think it's just one thing, but I do know it's not. Um, the the time closing early he- hurt it for sure. Uh, a lot of sections, not a dance floor, hurt. Mm. I feel like that dance having a dance floor helped, but then, you know, you can't get a bang for your buck. I I, I see mm. both sides. You know, the the consumer wants to dance, but the the owner and the promoter makes money off of a section. So well, dance in your section. I think I think I think the uh, I think the way they cracking down on these clubs, like the way the city and the committees, because people don't understand there is a Buckhead committee. There is yeah, a Brookhaven vote. committee. People vote. That's how I learned when I worked at Medusa. They shut us down. And then I believe it was after Medusa got shut down. They shut down. Uh, man, it was one excess line. X X S lounge. Yes, it was. It was, it was directly. Plaza. It was a directly. Shut out, Mr. Ruggs, man. I was his host. And then um, Is that Buford. Yeah, yeah, it was in Buford Highway, that, that but plaza. Them folks voted. Yeah. And they shut all that down. That's what people don't understand. There, there's a there's literally a, a committee of people that decides what they want in their community. And I'm, this last thing I'm gonna say, because I know we talk a kind of we kind of talk forever on this, but it's okay because the people need to know. Like you when, guys are nightlife workers. So check this yeah. out. This is crazy. Uh Buckhead, I mean not Buckhead, Medusa, Excess Lounge, Josephine Lounge, right? That's Brookhaven. When break-ins and, and, and shootings and stuff happen, that's crime. Mm-hmm. That makes your property values go down. Yeah. Yep. The people who vote they, own property in yep. that vicinity, like, hell no, no. Nah, nah. And they be like, nah, we voting to shut this thing down at 12 o'clock. That was the first strike. We was like, what, it closed at 12? I ain't even leaving my house till 1230. That, first it went to 2. Then it went to 12. And then after that, I knew it was over. Because mm. yeah, Atlanta don't show up until 2 a.m. But but keep in mind the committee. These people are not just uh, homeowners. These people are business owners as yeah. well. So they're looking like Probably I don't own a nightlife. They could sit there and say I own a Pizza Hut or I that, own those plazas. Wendy's was in that plaza. There's a whole bunch of yeah. other things in that plaza, and then make your property value go down when it's a shooting in the parking lot. Yep. Someone may have got murdered or robbed. I feel like nobody this, wants to be by car. That. Man, what? Nobody. Think about if you think about if you home, if you owned a home close to a club. And a shooting or incident happens, and you trying to sell your property, but your your property value goes down. You probably right. gonna talk to somebody on the committee, like, "Hey, yep. of course, we need to clean now, this I up." I totally get the committee mm-hmm. thing, but it's just like opera. Like you said, it's called something else, but it was called opera. That girl got date raped in the club. Yep, yep. And they changed it to a domain. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like imagine us for what? Well, shout out to MJ, Octavia, BT, Ferrari, and uh, MJ. MJ has a nightclub and MJ nightclub is has nothing but crime. Us three gonna be like, hey bro, what the hell you got going on over there? Mm-hmm. Nah. Yeah. Shut that shit down. 2 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you it, encourage uh people to get involved in their communities? Yeah. yeah. People gotta get involved in their community because the people on social media, the people on social media thinks that social media is the committee. They think not, social media is the community. You got to vote. You gotta vote. You gotta go talk to people. You gotta figure out who's runs the committee in your community. People are so fixated on who's over your Instagram. district who's you the know? mayor in your district who's this who's that when are there meet there are meetings that you can go to yeah i didn't know that uh the, the mayor of atlanta meetings. is in the mayor of cobb county no the mayor i did of not know that. the mayor of atlanta <laughs> there's a mayor of cobb there's a mayor in south fulton by the way i just learned that south fulton is the high, the most highest populated uh african american african american um county in the country i didn't know that i didn't know that either the most black people in the country the United States of America live in the South Fulton. I didn't know no that. idea. 
So in conclusion, where do you feel like night life, night life will be in the next five years? Oh, uh, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be restaurants and lounges, and mm-hmm. it's gonna be peaceful. It's gonna be chill. It's not gonna be like the older um, way that I saw. I saw not being Ferrari, just being Sean, a patron. How it was clubs and it was turned up when you first got here. When I first came to Atlanta, what when I graduated college, two thousand nine, mm-hmm. and then becoming into the light life it was still doing good but then it started changing what year was that i'd say 17 18 more sections started popping up um more things started happening i feel like more people started moving here too when you say the sections start popping up what do you mean so used to be a dance floor okay i remember Mm -hmm. seeing a large dance floor in parties and people dancing Mm -hmm. me too but i can't name one place that has a dance floor where That's do you, a who club. Who do you think uh, changed it with, with the sections? Ag. Uh, Ag introduced sections, but I don't think it was him because he had a dance floor, mm-hmm. and then everyone else started doing sections, and then he just started doing. He, op- I remember, he opened a lounge, and the lounge was nothing but sections. Mm-hmm. So I think those things started happening, and now you have a smaller amount of people, and then that also changed the way that DJs got paid. Because if it's only three hundred people in here, why would I pay you a thousand dollars when my overhead is less than that? Mm. So I'm all, I'm thinking of the economics. I'm thinking about all these things. They're making all their money off bottle service. So Ch- if if I can sell a section for fifteen hundred, I'm gonna put ten of them in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do the math. Well, keep in mind too, and that's uh, just a night. Another thing too is that the uh, the economy isn't where where it used to be. People have that to too. understand. It's like you go to a club, right? Think about how much it costs. Before you even walk into the club, Va- outfit. Well, you go, valet, out, well, yeah. the outfit. Before starting you get to the club, home. look, yeah. at home. hey, starting at home, outfit. You Hair. get to the club, you got to pay the valet guy. The valet guy wants fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you $50 put mo- the park. you gonna spend more money on parking than you put in your gas tank for the and week. Some people won't. <laughs> then you'll park your car in an area that it may get broken into. Wow. That's just how you're going to park your car on the side of the street or you're going to park maybe a block down. They'll charge you $10. They'll look over it for an hour and then walk away because then you'll come back to your car and be like, where's the the person I paid? Mm-hmm. And then think about money. how much it costs when you get into the club. Okay. Then you go, you have to pay. <laughs> Don't let nobody uh, left their ID. Now you got to pay $100 to get in. <laughs> this is just Atlanta. Yeah. And then um, you, you get in and you don't want to buy some drinks. A regular drink, twenty dollars. Average yeah. drink, so you know, sixteen or twenty dollars. You're spending some money, man. You're spending some money. Then you're gonna be hungry after you leave, or you're gonna buy some food in there because a lot of clubs in Atlanta got good food. That's one thing I will say: the, the chicken wings is miraculous. You think nothing gonna happen to the strip clubs, though, right? No, nah, nah. The, the strip that could be Atlanta, Atlanta and Houston, but the, but, but, the, the, but the, the nothing happens at the strip club. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, it should be happening now, but but it ain't gonna it ain't gonna change. But it. but think about this. All the strip club areas in Atlanta is not in the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. If you look at Magic City, look across the street from Magic City. It's a bus stop. It's a bus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look uh, at look uh, at Blue Onyx, Flame. Blue Flame, Blue Flame yeah. by a gas station. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Look at Onyx. Onyx yeah. is just in a random it's next, parking it's, it's lot. It's in the mall strip. It's, the, it's next, to, it's mall, next yeah. to a... It's next to something. What, yeah. Onyx? Yeah, it's at the corner, actually. Mm-hmm. And then it's but you on, see that yeah. big space. That, like, I got it, you. Like, I got yeah, you. but it's like, and, and strip clubs are like grandfathered in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it'd be like a sin to get rid of a strip club in Atlanta. Yeah. I, <laughs> you I, know I what I'm saying? Like, so what happens to all the promoters and the uh, the, the uh, nightlife, on, uh, the, the club owners and they stuff? They got to adjust. I know, yeah. I, I know a promoter ju- right now that asked me for a job. Like, hey, man, they hiring up there, I heard. But the, but I always tell people this: when you in the nightlife, this Atlanta is the only city that I've seen to where promoters have a full time job being a promoter. When I go to other cities, that's a part time. That's a part time job. job. Facts. Okay. So I, so I'm always wondering uh, a job this this uh, fragile. Why would you put all your eggs in a in in one you know a row to just be here? Mm. When yeah. I when you go to L. A., I know a promoter that's. Famous in LA for, pro, for for doing parties, but that's not what he do for a living. I, I, I would like to shout out Atlanta and the clubs and the parties because for about five years of my life, that's all I did, and I was blessed to be able to do like six different clubs. Because in different cities, you couldn't do that. You can only you only Hell work no. for one club. Pause for a second. Can we talk about that real quick? Uh, mm-hmm. The money part of it. The, the yeah. Oh, it's very lucrative. It's, yeah, it's good. It's good money. money. It's what very was the money l- like lucrative. in the clubs? Uh, well, in my day. Damn, I sound old, but my when, day. Yeah, it it, it was very lucrative for me because um, I would I was able to work for multiple clubs. I was able to work at Opera. I was able to work for AG at Compound. I was able to do uh, 
SO on Friday. I was able to do Halo on Wednesday. Like, can you give an example of like what you came home with a week like living? Oh, I can, you can make up. You can make anywhere from a thousand to possibly three thousand a week cash. Just it depends. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just depends on your hustle, who you are, your brand, how big it is. Then you can, you know, you can make money on the extra stuff too. Like, hey, you need you need help. Uh, I got six parties. Pull up to me. Pull up with me. All my parties. You walk in with me. I make sure you're good. I shot you out all night. Mm-hmm. Oh, how much does that cost? Oh yeah, it's a flat fee for this right here. You know what I'm saying? And you're talking about just hosting. Yeah. Okay. And imagine, the, imagine bottle girls. Bo- yeah. You know, bottle girls are they making a lot of money? They make too. a lot of money too. You know what I mean? Especially when they get yeah. getting tables and the tables is fifteen hundred dollars. Slow nights so when it's empty, you ain't making no money. Yeah. But see, Atlanta, you were, we were blessed to have moments where, like, I'm doing an AG party. It's Ti's birthday, and he brings X Y Z. Like it, it so other celebrity friends. Yeah, yeah. man, Atlanta's so different. Future just pops up on a random day. If you mm-hmm. you got a popping party, if he's in the studio and he leaves, he'll literally say, "What's going on tonight?" And if someone says, "Oh yeah, such and such is popping tonight," he'll just randomly pull up. Mm. That way, it's hard for artists to get booked in Atlanta because celebrities we, just we, pull up to we the party for you. free. We spoil you because, like, even even all the situation happened uh, with, with Red Martini at that particular time. When they did so all on social media about the club being uh, evicted and stuff like that, we got two big. We had two big artists that already had a table booked. Mm. This is just a random Wednesday you, night. You know what I mean? Like we are. So I'm over here like, okay, we get, we got to figure we out. Want to catch know. a vibe? Like Atlanta now has turned into a good vibe. So I do think the R and B parties will will continue to flourish. So that's why I think it's at. It's more so man, on the I vibe. Man, I think they need to stop making R&B time. parties, man. Y'all got to figure something else out, man. If I see one more damn R&B. It's, that's about, a, that's it's a, about five a week now. But that's another reason why the clubs are suffering because everybody's selling the same food. Mm. If everybody man. is selling hamburgers, how somebody ain't going to make it. Man, listen, bro. Somebody it's, business it's is not going to make it. Good R- <laughs> and I know, I know you, one is your party, but it's two good R&B parties. It's, one, it's the one on Monday. Yep, shout and out to Brick. One, and it's the one on Wednesday. Where are they at? Uh, one on Mondays at Suite on, upstairs. And then what was the other one you said? Uh, R&B Wednesday, but shit. Where the hell y'all gonna go? I mean, we gonna figure it out. If there is an honorable out. mention, that's the third The third one at Revel on Thursday. I like yep. that one. Yep. Yo, shout out J. Chris. Shout out Bowtie. You didn't tell say what the money was today. Um, <laughs> For me, for me it's, it's great. Um, you know, it's just it's really just based on your brand, honestly, because it's it's certain times like I don't do it anymore. But when I first started off, um, I used to do like three clubs a night. Yeah, me too. So I would I would find a little restaurant that I could go host. I'll be there, you know, from from ten to twelve. I find me an early party where I can be the opening host. I do that from you know uh uh, uh ten. To, I mean, sorry, from um uh. 12 to like 1 30 i will run out that club i'll try to go get to a club at 145 beat her to 3 30 you know so for me it was really good because i always had to hustle you know so and you just wouldn't talk to like the promoter there or something well i would just build my own relationship yeah, sometimes so, it's both yes they'll, they'll meet you together or you know once you you start bubbling you know People start Mother's calling you. They'll, they'll call, they'll this why I, this why I realized if you're really good at what you do, you they'll don't have to call you. people. They'll people call gonna you. call you. They gonna find you. And that's if you're just starting out, out. That's a different thing. You yeah, you just starting out. You, you gotta try to get you know. So if get your way you up. know Joe Blow and his in his small town want to be a club host. Yeah. So cl- party hosts. I would usually, say don't do it. I was gonna say usually people hire hosts. Who are already established brands and personalities because you're it's a familiar voice and a familiar face for yeah. a host. It's hard to start out as a host. I would say get popular doing something else. I would say That's try, easier. I was I would say have a skill set. Be start off DJing. Learn how to DJ because a DJ is more valuable get than on the a radio. Host. Get on the radio or get a popping podcast or something, something that could gravitate people to say, Oh, I know him. Mm. But we gotta start being honest with people, yeah. and this what this yeah, this is this year. Well, I'm gonna start. Well, I'm gonna start being honest with with people. It's too many damn hosts. It's too many damn DJs. Quit. Some of y'all need to go to school. What you say? What you say? Quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, man, I'm fine with y'all quitting. So if you ask me for some advice, you say you feel like giving up. I'm gonna tell you, you should probably give up. You should probably go to college. Go try to be a lawyer. Go try to be a doctor because we need more of those. We don't need no more DJs. We don't need no more promoters. We don't need no more hosts. It's it's oversaturated. Like, damn. 
Can y'all learn how to use Adobe Audition? <laughs> Yo. Like so crazy. for real. <laughs> you going crazy. For real. It's like it's it's oversaturated. It's like I don't know anybody. That's how they feel about podcasts. That, yeah, hey, that's that's one of the things but, that I said on Big Homie Show. Shout, shout out to our podcast. We've been doing podcasts way before people podcasts were popular. Mm -hmm. See, how long have y'all been doing a ball alert show? I was on the first ball alert show in 2016. How long you been doing our 17. 17. See, and y'all and y'all motherfuckers just start. Y'all need to stop, man. Everybody No, you don't tell people to stop. Yes. We have to be honest with people. If they're good, everybody, yes. if every, they're good, continue. If they're not good, but, but my, how do you become but, good? But listen, that's the problem. Nobody's telling people they suck. Everybody's telling people that they're good enough to go do something. Man, come holler at me at Ferrari Simmons. I'll let you know if I'll let you know if you need work, if you need to stop. It's know. gonna cost them though, right? It's gonna cost oh yeah. <laughs> I have my PayPal information. You said that like he was free. Nah, yeah. No. <laughs> but you see how smooth it. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, la that's later just, on in the conversation. Yeah, y'all just uh, hit me up. I'm going to see y'all look. One time for Drika, man. One time for Drika for this. Yeah, shout out to Drika, man. Yeah, she about yeah. to have our skin glowing. Can't wait to take this to the house to the wife. It's love versus money on the Baller Alert Show. All right, today we're on love versus money. I'm going to give the couple and you let me know if it's love or is it just business. Today we have Big Sean and Janae Ayoko. Oh, that's love. No, that's love. That's love. Um, they are just, they just had, you know, it's just a, it's a moment that they having. I, I, I don't like what Big Sean said. One time for Big Sean, that's my guy. I don't like what Big Sean, I don't like what he said though. Um, about what, I, marriage? About marriage, because I feel like as a married person, you're always going to go through things regardless. So you're going to go through things whether you're married or not. You're going to go through things with you in a regular relationship or not. So to say you want things to be right before you get married is kind of saying, okay, do I really want to be with this person? If that's your person, marry the person that you want to be with and go through those things and grow through those things with that person together. Mm -hmm. That's what a marriage actually is, getting through th things together together. And overcoming them together. That's what marriage is. And the you know deciding factors if you are willing to deal with that for the rest of your yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Is so that that's, person's that, that should be to it. you? I feel like that's what he had that's what he needs to say or think in his mind. Like, all right, is that my person that I want to go through the bullshit with? So if basically that is, what you said. Her. So basically what you're saying, he's not ready to be married. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I would rather he would just say that. And, well, matter of fact, just tell her that. Mm. She's like, I'm not ready to get married yet. I can tell he didn't want to answer that question. But he answered because <laughs> he kind of went on. He went. It was like it was like, like, like kind of personal. It was like an eight. It was like, <laughs> dude, what are you doing, right? What are you saying? This is actually worse than actually saying you don't want to marry. Her. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know she over there like what. Yeah, man. He but in the answer, you can tell that he's not ready. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We can tell. So I would just say on me. Well, I as know a man it, and who's married. I know it's love, though. I know he clearly loves that mm -hmm. lady, that woman. I know he loves that woman, and I know she loves him. But I think that they're probably they're in a funk, and sometimes couples go through a funk. See, Rory be knowing Rory be knowing relationships. He going like, through it. He like he like yeah, they ain't no good I, terms I would be, right I would now. Be <laughs> I'd be lame to say my, my marriage with my wife Tanisha is perfect. We be going through funks too, but mm -hmm. I know I want to be with her. So my the way that I view it is I'm not going to be mad at her to a point where I hate you or something like that. It's going to be, all right, she getting on my nerves, but this is my person. Let me figure out how to work through this. Work through this. With mm -hmm. her. She's not feeling me right now, and it's okay. Let's work through this. Mm -hmm. But you have to go through it to understand it too. But how is it, how important it is uh, for somebody to have a kid with somebody. This is a question for both of y'all. And co-parenting is crazy. But I'm saying, but it's like people. Pe I see a lot of people. It, you're asking, is it is, a, a more commitment to have kids versus marriage? Yes, that's it. No, yep. they're, they're different types of commitments because you can have a dope co-parenting situation with somebody and then not be with them. But then you can also have a difficult one because, like, someone may have someone may be super strict someone may be super not strict and then now you guys are someone may have religious beliefs about certain certain things like co-parenting is very difficult or it can be completely opposite and be easy but it's also a commitment it's to, a oh it's that's a lifelong commitment because you and, and that and person he, share a child but that's what a lot of the comments it will be saying like a lot of people are saying well having a child with somebody is more than a, yeah. a, of a commitment than a marriage well, I would, I would like to say, because I mean, so my religious beliefs are when I'm committed to my wife through marriage, this that's a forever commitment for me. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the kids and the mothers of my kids. I have two mothers of my 
I have two outside kids of my marriage before my marriage. And I have a lifelong commitment to them with my child. Now, is it a lot easier because my kids are older? Hell yeah. My 16-year-old and my 12-year-old, about to be 13-year-old, is easy to communicate because I could just text them. Then, then, of course, I still have to talk to mom about mm -hmm. like the very serious things. But the communication is so easy because I could call them. And they're older. My 16-year-old, she's a teenager. She's in 11th grade. We can have a complex conversation. How are you doing? Da, 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 da. And she'd be like, Dad, da, 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 da. all right, well, make sure you talk to your mom about this. Or, all right, cool, I'll talk to Tanisha about this, blah, 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 blah. So we're having a complex conversation. Mm -hmm. A baby? You can't talk to the baby. You got to talk to the parent. So it take it's levels to it. You gotta take time. This shit so, takes time. So, so you think it's so you think it's more of a commitment having a kid than being married. I feel like it's different levels to. Com I, I feel like man, I feel yes like or no, man. I can't answer that because it's 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 so it's so. And it's deep. like we can it's only deep. ask you because you're the only one married. All right, it's deep. And you don't want got kids. Pause. It's deep. Like I could tell that they well from outside looking in. The Big Sean and Janae, I feel like they are each other's person. They look so good together. They look like they fit if they're a puzzle. Been they look like they fit. Years. So it looks like they're just Yo, going they've through been together something. Nine years. It looks like they're going through something. And if you listen to their I joint album, time, you could tell that there's something there between both of them. Like, oh wow, you guys make great music together. Also, yeah, yeah, we need to, bro. We need to next that one. album, that joint project fire. that they put out was 20. so fire. I listened to that. I don't, you know, y'all know me. I don't like R and B. But one time for Janelle Aiko, I went to the concert, I took my daughters for their birthday and my wife. I ain't gonna lie. She lit. Yeah, I heard it was she lit. She lit. Yeah. I went to the concert. We stayed the whole time. Usually I'd be ready to get up out of there. She brought out B2K uh, recently too. Yeah, she she did dope. I didn't know she had a full sister, say mama, say daddy. I don't know yeah. how uh, Omarion was on her little fizz. All right, man. Well, that leads us to our pep talk. Uh, we need a pep talk out of here, Rory. And you've been, you know, speaking lo love all this time. You got any love pep talk? Uh, just stop lying. Stop lying to each other. Like I, you know, sometimes in that, sometimes it could be I ain't talking to the guy. I'm talking to the ladies too. Like just stop lying. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to each other. Keep it all the way a buck. I feel like that trims away all the bullshit up front. If something's going on, you feel a way about something, man. Please could overly communicate with the person. This could be in friendships too. Uh, I've learned in friendships sometimes everybody ain't meant to go with y'all all, all the way through. Mm -hmm. Okay, you could be best friends with somebody for five, six years, and then all of a sudden things happen, and you ain't friends like that no more. It's okay. It's okay. Some people grow apart. Some people grow apart. Stop lying, though. No, stop lying. Follow alert. <laughs> 